when you're doing life as an entrepreneur, there's fine lines between personal and business. But when you're really in harmony, I truly believe that it's where everything coincides. You can't have the personal side without the business. And when those things are in the flow state, they're operating and you can't really tell the difference, which is a good and a bad thing. But for me, it's been good. And I also enjoy posting about the personal ups and downs. And that's typically when I get the most engagement and also get the most potential business out of it. Hey everyone, this is Mark DeGrasse, the president of Digital Marketer, and this is the podcast that keeps you up to date on everything you need to know when it comes to digital marketing, from the platforms you'd be focused on to the kind of tactics and tools that are working today. So our guest is Adam McChesney, a partner at Hype Digital and their VP of Growth. He actually took an agency from zero to seven figures in only 15 months and was actually named the Hype Digital Franchise of the Year in both 2021 and 2022. Uh, which are all amazing uh, accomplishments. So uh, congrats, Adam. I appreciate it, Mark. Thanks for having me on, man. Good to see you again. Well, you know, that's uh, I'm super happy to, excited to hear you because I actually heard you down at the event, uh, the Commitment Summit down in Costa Rica in June, and you had a great speech about your story and kind of how you developed and uh, you became an agency owner and, and finally kind of found a, a good spot at uh, High Digital. Uh, let's just talk about, uh, you know, what it means to to grow fast today because i think a lot of agency owners are seeing you know businesses contract their marketing budgets uh you know there is a ton of competition in marketing uh you know what have you seen today that's really working in terms of uh scaling an agency yeah so over the last three years so i went full-time in july 2020 and that was right as people started to get a bunch of money after the pandemic right. and so really the last three years i think have inflated what reality typically is in growing any business especially on the agency side so people weren't necessarily too critical of maybe working with an agency and they were like hey i got this money to spend i might as well spend it and you're starting to see those people scale back um, as well as really, really hold agencies accountable. And if you weren't holding yourself accountable as an agency, you're probably like, what the heck is going on? This is a crazy economic time in, in, in downturn, which it, it definitely is. You know, we've seen it as well this year. Um, but I think at the, the basis of that is really the personal brand side to what I've done. And so agency owners are a dime a dozen. Anytime you talk with a business, if they've been in business for any amount of time, the first thing they're probably going to say is, oh, I've heard this before. I've been burned by somebody. So it's how do you separate yourself from everybody else that's out there? And people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. So I formed a nice little niche within the agency space, focusing on personal branding and just documenting the day in the life of the journey of the entrepreneur. Because as we're selling our agency services, we're talking to an HVAC company, Roofer, uh, tree services, lawyer, whatever industry they're in, they still go through the same stuff that we do as an entrepreneur. So trying to connect with them and meet them where they're at. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I love how you mentioned personal brands too, because, you know, I mentioned before the show, I'm like, you know, no matter what happens with the agency you're with or the company you're with, you're still going to be you. And so right. that brand should be I mean, really first, if you really think about it, but you don't have to do it first because nobody does. <laughs> uh, but let's just talk about that. That you know, How does personal branding actually start to come into play when it comes to any of these businesses that are in you know, a bunch of different industries? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, like I've utilized Facebook really, really well. That's kind of been my main platform to see a lot of this growth. I've added in Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, all the other stuff, YouTube. But with Facebook specifically, Business owners are hanging out there, but they're not they're not necessarily there for for just their own business. They're there to acquire information, to connect with like-minded individuals. Whereas if they go over to LinkedIn, they know they're gonna get bombarded and they'll still get bombarded on Facebook, just not nearly as much. Also, it's really difficult to get into their email inbox because mm -hmm. they're getting dozens and dozens of people reaching out saying they can offer the same stuff. They're getting cold call all the time. So when you do it from your personal page and you don't just automatically go in and spam them, but you provide value first <laughs> and then build the relationship, build this stuff over time, I've kind of seen it take off ever since I was at about six months of doing it consistently, just because other people want to see you win as well if you're not trying to just sell them all the time. That's awesome. So you're actually saying to use your personal Facebook page as kind of the, the brand platform. 
Absolutely. Yeah, because it breaks down that wall and barrier versus a business page or versus just trying to add Mark and, and be like, hey, Mark, I'm a digital marketer. I see you own a business. Let me help you. I can help you. You're not really in it for them. You're in it for you. Mm. No, that's a great point. It's it's funny because I actually I think I just did one of those posts where I was like, sorry, everybody, I have too many friends. And so I need to delete some of you. Uh <laughs> Which is, which is actually funny because it's not from my marketing community. It's actually from like 12 years ago when I was in the fitness industry. And, you know, that was my marketing method. The fitness industry was like, oh, okay, I'll just friend people who have fitness pictures as their profile because they're obviously in the fitness industry then. Yep. Uh, but now I'm kind of like, oh, crap, I got to go back and, and revise that list. Uh, how do you suggest kind of uh, tailoring? I mean, do you have any separation between your, your personal content and then your uh, kind of, hey, here's what's going on in my business content? I try to keep it one and the same. And that's really, you know, about three weeks after I went into entrepreneurship full time, I joined a mastermind that kind of taught you how to be mm. the authority in your space and build a personal brand. And one of the things they talk about is kind of merging everything together. And right. I know a lot of people hear that and they're like, wow, I don't want that. I have, you know, friends and family and, and, you know, people I went to college with and all that stuff. For me, it's been good because I think that's what people want to see, right? Yeah. Uh, when you're doing life as an entrepreneur, there's fine lines between personal and business. But when you're really in harmony, I truly believe that it's where everything coincides. You can't have the personal side without the business. And when those things are in the flow state, they're operating and you can't really tell the difference, which is a good and a bad thing. But for me, it's been good. And I also enjoy posting about the personal ups and downs. And that's typically when I get the most engagement and mm. also get the most potential business out of it. Because I talk about the things that most people won't want to talk about. And the ideal client that I'm trying to cater towards, they see my posts and they're like, man, I've gone through that. No different oh. than storytelling from stage and speaking through stories and actual experiences versus talking about, you know, theories and ideas and all this stuff and just trying to pitch what you do. When it comes out a little bit more natural, people connect with that and they start to build that relationship on a deeper level. Ah, I love that. Well, I love, you know, two aspects of it, which is not separating your your work life from your personal life, because I think that's a fallacy altogether. You know? yeah. It's like, I'm going to be this way for 10 hours a day. And then for 14 <laughs> hours, I'm going to be that way. It's like, it's not even a healthy thing to do. So yeah. uh, I do like that point because it is, you know, it's tempting to be like, okay, I'm going to separate those two things so I can keep my family apart from all the stuff I'm doing all the time, which is not a good idea. Uh, yeah. and then the other part is that kind of genuine approach where I think a lot of people are tired of being like, oh, look at, he's perfect. And, uh, he has a nice car and hello, he's going on vacation and he's just basically doing that kind of like self promote, like, look how successful I am. You should ask me why, uh, right. kind of thing, which, which is also, well, it's like an MLM marketing yeah. method is, <laughs> is how it looks these days. Uh, but yeah, showing that that's, could you give a couple of examples of kind of, cause I think the hardships are tough because people don't want to, you know, seem like they don't know what they're doing. Uh, everybody has that kind of, uh, imposter syndrome where it's like, well, if I mentioned that I don't actually know about this subject, then, uh, people judge me for it. Um, what's a good balance between like telling too much and, uh, you know, being genuine and sharing some of the hardships and not just the accomplishments. Yeah, so I take about a 90, 10 per, uh, 10, 90 to ten percent approach. So ninety percent has nothing to do with digital marketing. It's more so just business experience, personal lives, ups and downs. With about ten percent of it actually being about digital marketing or marketing. And in those digital marketing and marketing uh, posts, I'm more so telling a story about a client or a team member or things that we're working on. Uh, there is a fine line of you're like you don't want to air out all of your issues and things like that because <laughs> you'll see potential clients on there or you might see your clients but when i have done that it tends to build that trust and authority even <laughs> to a deeper level now on the personal side i've talked about a variety of different struggles of of giving up alcohol for seven and a half months because i was Ooh. really just struggling and and more so drinking out of i uh, just habit that i was actually doing it for um, enjoyment and anything like that. So I've talked about that journey. I've just talked about the journey of managing multiple companies and really feeling like, why am I, you know, why am I doing this? I came from medical device sales. 
where I was making really, really good money, multi six figures. I had all the benefits. I had the upward trajectory of all of that stuff. So when I tell that story, it's really tough for people to relate to it because a lot of times, uh, especially in the agency owner world, there's people that are at, you know, every stage of life when they become an agency owner, they might be at rock bottom and this is the only thing that they found. They might've worked at another agency. Very few people have came from medical device sales where they had it in quote unquote made. And so I've opened up about my struggles in trying to find my purpose and identity because I never really had one up until about two years ago. So I think just understanding where people are at and understanding what's most important to other people and then doing your content, whether it's for business or whether it's on the personal side, and then just going around with it. That's awesome. Well, and I, I think that's a really good approach because it's, uh, you know, uh, people don't like to share the struggle a lot of times because they, they feel like they're going to be judged and, and maybe they put up this big facade of everything's perfect and blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah. But you always get usually the people that look a little too perfect eventually end up doing that post like my life fell apart and it's yeah. terrible. <laughs> so you should just share everything. And then, you you know, you'll have support when you're having problems too, on top of the fact that you won't feel so alone as yeah. you're going through uh, kind of transitions. I, I went through a big transition about a year ago. So I'm like, oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like everybody, yeah. you have everything and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, well, I could complain about why I don't have everything. And even if you think I did, it doesn't matter because I'm unhappy. And so- yes. I'm going to change it all anyways. So yeah. that's, uh, it's good to hear that, that I'm not alone in that either. So, uh, good connection. Hey everyone. I want to quickly interrupt the podcast for a special announcement. If you're listening to this podcast because you want to become a better marketer, then I want to share with you what I believe to be the most comprehensive digital marketing program on the market today. It's called the digital marketing mastery certification. You'll learn to leverage the tools and channels to predictably and profitably drive awareness, lead sales, and referrals. Everything you need to know to become a true master of digital marketing. We'll take an in-depth look at the core digital marketing competencies, including content, email, social media, community, digital advertising, data and optimization, and more. After earning your digital marketing strategy certificate, you'll have the tools to effectively reach your target audience through a full scope marketing strategy. Get started today at digitalmarketer.com slash strategy cert. Uh, so let's talk about, you know, using that. So you have the personal brand going, you have an agency going, uh, you have good work-life balance. Uh, now, how do you get to the point where you can scale? Because I know with agency owners, well, me, when I had my agency, I would say, okay, I'm going to make a drive. And then I get a bunch of business that'd be like, oh crap, this is so much work. And I'd stop selling and then the business would drop down and I'd be like, oh crap, I need money. And then I'd, it would be this up and down cycle of you know, getting business, serving business, and then getting business, serving business. Um, how did you find the ability to scale? Because seven figures in 15 months, that's huge. Yeah, so I had built a personal brand and I had started to have enough work that was coming in for me to basically have a waiting list of people that were interested in doing business with me. And then a couple months into that journey, I was like, hey, about nine months into that journey, I was like, man, I can't keep up with, the waiting list. And this waiting list continues to grow and grow and grow. And so that's at that point when I found Height Digital, which was kind of a perfect fit. They offered the product, uh, the, obviously the product and the fulfillment in the systems, as well as some of the management team on the account side, because I was literally everything in the business. So I got back into digital marketing on the side in 2018. I was doing rank and rent. So I know how to build the website. I know how to do the SEO. I know how to do the paid ads, but I'm, I'm, not great at like doing that all day long. And so I struggled to hire people. Once I got into the height system and realized that people are really the aspect, the tangible aspect that you need in order to scale effectively, that was like the light bulb moment that I was the bottleneck at any situation where I've looked in our agency where it's like, man, we're hitting a wall, we're hitting a wall. It was because I wasn't pulling myself out of the business and working on the business and bringing in the right person in order to do that. So admittingly, when I was doing everything on my own, I was waiting until the absolute last minute. I was holding on to every dollar that I could in in order to you know profit more instead of just finding that person that actually wanted to do everything and could solely focus on that. So really what we were able to do is just grow through people. And I was able to do what I was doing best, which was the personal branding, which was the speaking, the podcasting, all that type of stuff. And we just started to grow and grow and grow and then scale our account management team, 
And uh, it worked out, you know, really well for the last two years for us to be able to solely focus on that as our thing without having to sacrifice service, without having to sacrifice the product. But I think that, that's where people struggle is they want to get to seven figures. They don't understand what actually has to happen in order to get to seven figures. No, oh, yeah. Well, and I think, it, you know, the hardest part, I think, is what, what you kind of talked about, where you're doing everything and you're you're touching everything. You want everything done right. And so you're really involved in it and letting go of those tasks and starting to realize, like, no, my my core competency is this. I'm good at this. We'll make more money if I just do this. Uh, sounds easy, but it's really yeah. not, especially if you're a doer. So uh, how did you kind of jump that hurdle of like, OK, I am going to take the step. I'm going to outsource or I'm going to rely on other people to get this job I thought I had to do done myself because that's that's hard. Do you have any tips in terms of letting go? I, I you know, for me, it was really just like understanding what I was truly good at. And so I look back to my medical device sales career and I've been in sales ever since I graduated college. Like that's what I enjoyed doing, which has now led me to be a partner at all of height and the VP of growth. But I had convinced myself that because I had traveled for the last five years in medical device sales and I was really, really good at it, that I wanted to take a step back and truly just start to do stuff behind a computer. I wanted to, to do project by project stuff. And then I started to do that. And I realized I didn't like it either. So it's kind of at this fork in the road moment, like, what do I like more? What do I like less? And I had convinced myself that nobody could build a website better than me. Nobody could do on-site SEO better than me. Nobody knew how to build any pages and run paid ads to it better than me. And that's a very, very tough spot to be in because you have to set the ego aside. But my ultimate goal was to create a life of freedom. And that's why I left. So the freedom to work where I want to, when I want to, with who I want to, and how I want to. If the business is 100% reliant on me in any given department, I'm always going to be not having that freedom. I'm always going to be, you know, in the business. And when I was thinking about what does the future look like, if I ever wanted to sell my agency, if I ever wanted sure. to, you know, do different businesses, I wasn't going to be able to leave the business because the sales department was the last thing that I finally gave up about a year ago. I was still doing all the sales. So if I take a vacation, if I'm sick, if, if anything happens, that's a direct impact to the growth of the business. And so I finally had to, you know, department by department, task by task, just understand on the a list of what was most important, but also what I enjoyed doing. Like right now, my goal is to work myself out of the job that I'm in right now or the department that I'm in right now. So then that way I can fulfill other things I want to do. But if I don't have that end in mind, I don't know where I'm trying to go. I'm just like, let's grow, let's grow, let's grow. And that's where the personal brand comes in as well. The personal brand originally was built, nobody knew my first agency name because everything was Adam McChesney, which is a good and a bad thing because people came to know, like, and trust me. Well, when I started to bring additional team members in, I would sign them up, do the onboarding call. Hey, now you're going to meet with so-and-so. They're like, oh, well, where's where am I going to meet with you? I had kind of created a system where everybody thought that they were buying Adam and buying Adam as the entire business. So now I've separated it to height posts where I'm literally just talking about our team, highlighting our team members, you know, what they do each and every single day and getting out in front of that versus like hiding behind, making people think that when they hire us, they're going to get me and only me. No, and I think that's, so it's almost like a objective based, okay, here's where I want to get to. And then here's all the things that need to happen in order for me to get there. And some of those things are, I don't do this stuff. And, yes. and I, do, I, I like how you said, like, you, you thought you were unhappy in one job, then you went to another job, and then you realized, I'm not happy doing that either. That's a tough thing to do to, to make the transition that quickly, because a lot of people would just be like, well, I'm making money. I'm doing Ooh. well in that regard, so I should just be happy and shut up and do my job. Uh, so I think that's a, it's a brave thing to do, and it's it's hard. Because that's yeah. you're saying no to maybe more money. Actually, you're saying yes to more money because you're basing everything on your objective. But you're saying no to more money like immediately because you're going to have to pay people to help and yeah. and let go of some stuff. So I, I think that's a difficult thing. I think you've done it super well. Now, for <laughs> agency owners that kind of want to make that next transition, say they have an agency, I say half a million dollars, that it's 100% dependent on them. They're working their butts off. They know that if they get more business, they're probably going to have more work and they're already tired. Um, how do you think people could take that first step to transitioning to be not killing themselves all the time? Yeah, I think it's really just doing a time audit. So, you know, take two weeks, for example, of a time period and, and literally just write down everything that you're doing. 
from the most minute things to more holistic projects that you're working on. And then basically that's what I did. And I ranked it in order of what I like doing the most. Like, where was I in my zone of genius? Where did it feel like I wasn't working at all? And then where was I like pulling my hair out? Stuff that's at the bottom of that list, like the stuff you absolutely don't like and takes up most of your time, you need to start outsourcing that stuff immediately. I read the book, Buy Back Your Time by Dan Martell earlier this year, just a phenomenal book at truly understanding the revenue generating activities, but the impact of hiring somebody out to do something that that's their sole job and they're actually probably like to do, even though you're paying them, it has such a bigger return on investment, getting you your time back to focus on the things you actually like to do. And you have to continuously evolve each and every single month, each and every single quarter, year, et cetera. There's always going to be things that you're needing to push off of your list that delegate and elevate type of activity. So that's the exercise that I would go through. And I think a lot of people think, and this is where I probably went wrong in the beginning is I hired, you know, full-time people. And I had people that I was paying really, really good money because I wanted to do things differently. And I thought that that was the way. You don't have to do that. You could literally hire virtual assistants, part-time people, things that you know are very, very simple tasks, but they just take up your time and energy. Just start there and then build it up from there. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to hire somebody for a hundred grand a year and basically replace yourself. Ideally, that's the goal probably at the end of the day, but you got to start somewhere and you got to start to take some things off your plate. No, I love that. It sounds super simple. And uh, and I think when you do that kind of audit of your time, you start to realize like, man, I am wasting so much time doing something that, has no, that could be done by anybody and mm -hmm. has very little to do with my talent or my energy. So who cares? Just get rid of it. But I would you know, say, it, I would say, yeah, the other thing I would say is in the very beginning, before I had kind of transitioned over to high, like I was doing everything manually. Like, and even when I was made that transition over to high, like, I wasn't creating processes and systems that were automated and duplicated. So I was reinventing the wheel almost every single time. So the other thing that I would tell you, especially even if you're just getting started, as silly as it sounds, is create all those SOPs, use as much automation as humanly possible. That actually makes sense. But make sure you're recording yourself on Loom. Make sure your team is recording themselves. So that way you have actual training when you bring that next person in. The part of the problem in, in scaling is if somebody leaves or if you are out and there's not a playbook for somebody to walk in and to and do it, you're going to have to retrain that person each and every single time. Yeah. Well, and I think that, well, I love the tip of just, even if you're a one person and you're just figuring out your stuff, like writing that down. Cause I think that the mistake is that people think like, I don't have time. I am so busy yeah. right now, just trying to survive. I'm hustling. I can't write this stuff down. And it's uh, it's a huge mistake because if you just Thanks. took 30 minutes a day and said, hey, I did these five tasks, they were all basically the same task. If I just wrote it down, wrote down the process, now you could, like you said, you don't have to hire a $100,000 person, just hire a VA, uh, you know, go on Fiverr, have somebody else do it and just see what that makes you feel. Because personally, when I started doing that, I was like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. I just send this email. And then the thing that used to take me two, three hours at a time is done and I don't have to think yep. about it. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's incredible. Our well, this is, this has been fantastic. I think it, I think you gave some really practical, easy tips that, that agencies at almost any level could start to think about, you know, scaling and, and maybe, you know, giving up the rat race to figure out what you actually want to do with your life. Um, I, I do have another podcast. I'll probably invite you on to talk about transformations because it sounds like you went through a really good one and it's led to a bunch of awesome things happening. So, well done. I appreciate that, man. Thank you for having me. Uh, where can people find out more about you and uh, your company and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. You can go over to adammcchesney.com. That's where you'll find all the different stuff I'm working on, as well as all my social links. And then the easiest place to connect with me on social media is going to be Instagram. And my handle is Adam L. McChesney. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Adam. Uh, you know, digital marketer, we love all of you over at uh, High Digital. We think you guys do an amazing job. And, uh, you know, more more is coming up. We'll be talking again soon. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. And thank you so much for listening. Be sure to hit that follow button so you get notified when all of our new episodes are released. Please share this with that friend who's clueless about digital marketing. And don't forget to visit digitalmarketer.com where you can access all of our courses, certifications, and training programs. Thanks again, everyone. And we'll see you next time.